Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. Today, I am reviewing the Jublink RX 1500. That's a 1500 megabits per second dual band gigabit Wi-Fi 6 router. Now it says 1500 megabits per second because that is split over two bands. 300 megabits for to the 2.4 gigahertz band and 1200 megabits per second for the 5 gigahertz band. Now, before we jump in to the review, let's first explain a little bit about Wi-Fi 6 since there has been so many iterations to the standard that it can get quite confusing. In 2009, 802.11n came on the scene and that is now called Wi-Fi 4 and it used multiple antennas to increase data rates. It standardized support for MIMO, that's multiple input and output and some security improvements and supported dual band 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. Now, this was a huge improvement over the previous 802.11a and 802.11g. Then in 2013, there was the 802.11ac, and this is now called Wi-Fi 5. This is basically a supercharged version of Wi-Fi 4. Wi-Fi 4 supported four spatial streams with a channel width of 40 MHz, but Wi-Fi 5 bumped this up to eight spatial streams with channels twice as wide operating over the gig 5 GHz band. Now, Wi-Fi 5 also introduced 256 QAM. That's quadrature amplitude modulation. And that is used from cell phones and almost every form of high-speed data communications. And this was bumped from 64 QAM with Wi-Fi 4. Well, now we have Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax. And this delivers up to 40% higher peak data rates for a single client service. Thanks to the higher 1024 QAM modulation. More data is transmitted per packet. Wi-Fi 6 has lower latency, which means improved load times and helps avoid disconnects. It uses OFDMA technology, which helps when you have more users on a network and reduces interference. Wi-Fi 6 offers support for Mu MIMO. Now that is multi-user, multi-input, multiple output, both uplink and downlink. Before Mu MIMO, your router would send data to each device on the network in turn. It would do it fast, but it could only pay attention to one device at a time. Now with Moo Mimo, the router can communicate with multiple devices using a separate stream for each, and this was added to Wi-Fi 5. With improved beamforming, Wi-Fi 6 also offers less dead zones. And finally, if your laptop has Wi-Fi 6 network card, it can use target wake time, which basically turns Wi-Fi on and off depending on when there is a Wi-Fi transmission. And this improves battery life. Does this mean you need a Wi-Fi 6 compatible device to use a Wi-Fi 6 router? No, not at all. I set out here to establish the performance difference between a Wi-Fi 6 router against my Wi-Fi 5 router using both a Wi-Fi 6 Killer 1650X wireless card and an Intel 9560 card in the same laptop, my Omen 15T. The Wi-Fi 5 router I used is an Orbi. I have two units, one on the ground floor and one on the second floor. This setup creates a Wi-Fi web that bounces the signal from one unit to another, helping to improve dead spots. It automatically switches between the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, depending on the signal strength, and has a dedicated third band to communicate between the two units. At $312, they are not cheap. And the Wi-Fi 6 pair actually costs a staggering $700. This will serve to see how well a single Wi-Fi 6 router that touts better dead zone coverage compares to such a setup. I test four locations, first about three foot from the routers on the ground floor. Second, in my office, which is on the second floor, about 35 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 access point, passing through the floor and a number of walls. The third location is my basement, which is about 35 feet from both the Wi-Fi 6 and the Orbi routers on the floor above it. And the fourth location is outside, some 30 yards away from the access points and the signal having to go through a brick wall. The Wi-Fi 6 router being used is the Juplink RX1500, which is the same as actually the TP-Link AX1500. It is powered by a Tricore 1.5 GHz 64-bit processor, and it supports OFDMA and MIMO, and bumps up to 1024 QAM from the 256 QAM on Wi-Fi 5. In the box, you get the power supply and the router, which has four antennas. It is made of black plastic, it is very light and it doesn't stand up unfortunately, but it is small enough that it uh, shouldn't take up too much space. Now around the back it has 4 gigabit LAN ports and a 1 gigabit WAN port. A WPS and a reset button and a power button. 
it costs $90 on Amazon, so it is a much cheaper solution than the Orbi, and we'll have, I will have a link for it in the description. Setup is easy, just connect to it and type 192.168.01 in your browser. Enter admin for the username and password. You can change these and the Wi-Fi password in the settings. It does have quality of service settings that provides different priority to different applications, users, or data flows, or to guarantee a certain level of performance to data flow. It has a guest mode and also some basic white and black listing of websites. Okay, so let's look at the results. I use speedtest.net to measure the upload and download speeds, always using the same server and ran each test twice and averaged it. First, when we are right next to the router, we have the Wi-Fi 6 Killer 1650X uh, network card in green and the Intel 9560 card in red. At this distance, the Orbi is using the 5 GHz band, so let's compare that to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 router. With the 9560 Wi-Fi card, both the upload and download speeds were faster with the Wi-Fi 6 router. But strangely, when we switched to the more compatible Killer Wi-Fi 6 card, the download speed tanked using the Wi-Fi 6 router. 94 megabits per second versus 215. Uploads were similar at about 300 megabits per second. Using the 2.4 gigahertz band, the 9560 Wi-Fi card was consistently faster than the Killer Wi-Fi 6. Go figure. Perhaps a more realistic use case would be in a dead zone setting, such as my basement. In this situation, the Wi-Fi 6 router did better than the Orbi router, I would say. Sure, the download speed using the 9560 card was faster at 205 megabits per second, but in general, as you can see at the top, we were consistently at 145 to 160 megabits per second, with a slight benefit when connected via the Intel 9560. It is strange that it seems having a compatible Wi-Fi 6 card in your laptop doesn't seem to offer any benefit so far. As for the 2.4 GHz band on the Wi-Fi 6 router using the older 9560 card proved to be the best again. The next extreme test case is going outside. This may be more applicable if you're using your cell phone. Your Orbi does seem to struggle a bit more here. So it does look like Wi-Fi 6 router does help a little bit You know when the signal has to pass through a solid object such as the wall and the distance from the router is quite far. But once again, we see the older Intel 9560 Wi-Fi card outperforming the Killer 1650X. The final test is in my office on the floor above the Wi-Fi 6 router. Now, I do have an Orbi unit fairly close to this room, as it was always a dead spot for me. At the bottom, we see the Orbi results, and it's no surprise to see the speeds doing great on the 9560 Wi-Fi card in red. But again, the Killer 1650X card really did suck. Even when paired with the Wi-Fi 6 router, it didn't do great, especially on the 2.4 GHz band. I would like to point out that I did have a number of dropouts using the 5 GHz band, which was annoying, so I would recommend that a mesh network makes much more sense to overcome dead spots than a, a single Wi-Fi 6 router. Both routers support MIMO, so let's see how they perform when many users are on the same network. I have five laptops streaming YouTube, and in my basement, I do the same tests again. Wi-Fi 6 router is much faster. I also show the speed with a single device on the network, and the Wi-Fi 6 router loses only 19% performance on average versus the Orbeez 43%. Now for comparison, I use my HP Pavilion with the Intel 9560 to do the same test. And interestingly, they were faster than my Omen, but this time Wi-Fi 5 was faster. So yeah, if you have a lot of users on the network and you have a Wi-Fi 5 router, it looks best to use a non-Wi-Fi 6 network card. But you have a, if you do have a Wi-Fi 6 router, then, you know, use a Wi-Fi 6 card will benefit you. So to sum up Wi-Fi 6, it does seem to have a speed benefit over Wi-Fi 5. If you're quite far from your access point, but it is prone to dropouts if you have multiple walls or floors for the signal to travel through. And for this situation, perhaps it makes more sense to get a Wi-Fi 6 extender. Now, as for using a Wi-Fi 6 network card, I generally saw better speeds using my older 9560 card, especially on the 2.4 gigahertz band. Perhaps my multi-user test wasn't quite rigorous enough. After all, Wi-Fi 6 can handle up to 12 simultaneous streams. But to see the benefit, you will need compatible Wi-Fi 6 cards in every device. Either way, the Joplink RX 1500 is a decent entry into Wi-Fi 6. It is quite affordable, but it does lack some more advanced features like good parental control or port forwarding that you would see on other routers.
Now, if you do like my review, make sure to subscribe. You know, there's a button at the bottom of the screen here in the left-hand corner. Click on that, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye.